Hi, I'm Melissa Shea, President and CEO of the Long Island Real Estate Investors Association. Two decades ago, on a dare, I purchased my first home with no money down. I received $7,000 cash at the closing and earned $200 a month in passive income, all while my tenant was paying the mortgage. Since then, we've purchased over $30 million in real estate and have taught people just like you how to do the same. Go to outoftheratracepodcast.com, register, and let us teach you how to become financially independent through real estate investing today. Hey guys, you're listening to the Out of the Rat Race podcast, the podcast that teaches everyday people how they can become financially independent through real estate investing. Be sure to like and follow our show so that you're kept up to date on our new content, which is uploaded between one and three times a week. And with that, let's get into today's episode. So in case this is your first time joining in, my name is John Shea, and sitting across from me today is my beautiful wife, Melissa Jeanette Shea. We've been on kind of a hiatus with the move and the kids not being in school and, you know, all that jazz. Uh, but what's today, Melissa? Today is the most wonderful time of the year. That's right. It's the first day back to school. So we're truly sorry that it's been hard to get the content out to you, but we are in fact back. Uh, so let's pick up where we left off. Last time we did a story of debt part one. So I guess it would be fitting to uh, get into part two, which I think we will focus on uh, how to get out of debt. Yeah, different strategies, because last time we were talking about um, just the generalities, but this one is more um, geared for step by step. Right. right. But first, an icebreaker question. Oh, love these. Okay, we haven't, haven't done these in a while. I know, I know. <clears throat> All right, but Melissa, before mm -hmm. making a phone call, do you rehearse what you're going to say and why? You could be honest. I really should. It depends on what the phone call's about, but um, I really should. But um, for most times, you know what? Sometimes if you think too long, you won't make the phone call. So sometimes just dialing the phone and uh, making the phone call will just get you over that fear factor. So you just wing it. Well, it depends. That's what I said. Like if it's a, a proposal of something or something that I, I really want to, I prepare for. So there's two strategies, either be really prepared and then make the phone call or just do it like Nike says. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, so first things first. Um, wow. I'm drawing a blank here. So the first thing I think that you need to do uh, when trying to get out of debt is to actually identify what that debt is. Is that correct? Yeah. So what happens is um, once you start getting into debt so much, um, you kind of almost turn a blind eye to it and you it's easier to hide your head in the sand than face the reality of what you're dealing with because maybe you don't have enough money to pay it all or something like that. But if you stop and take an assessment of where you're at, which is looking at all the specific debts that you really do have, um, nine times out of 10, some people say, I don't even know what I have because I have it on automatic drafts or things like that. But if you take the time, take a day and pull your credit report, that's probably the easiest way see what debts are reporting, um, personal debts, see that what's reporting on there, put it in an ex, uh, Excel spreadsheet or something, some kind of spreadsheet that at least you can start seeing the debt visually. Because once you see it, it becomes real and then you can start working from there. And by doing that, you won't have a, a little tiny debt sneak out from around the corner when you least expect it. Yeah, and a lot of people think, you know, oh, mortgage, car loan, maybe a student loan. They forget all those little credit cards and especially those star cards and uh, the little debts that they take out, the, you know, personal loans for this or that, you know, I think some of these um, online stores, they have these credit programs and stuff like that. So you don't realize all these little things add up mm. and they could cost you a lot. All right. Random question number one. How do you think someone would gain credibility quickly? Damn, I haven't had these questions in a while. Um, Just stumping you. Yeah, I think, how do you build credibility right away? Quickly, I, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, you got to really master your craft at whatever you're really good at. Um, stories relating to real live stories, not fake stories, but real live stories of what you're trying to illustrate definitely builds credibility, I think. I think I'm pretty credible in uh, underwater basket weaving. <laughs> Really, because you do it so often. <laughs> but you could be very credible in cooking because you do That's phenomenal true. cooking. Yes. I'm, I'm a pretty good cook. Yes, you are. All right. Um, so before we do the next question, we have a networking meeting coming up on Wednesday, September 14th at the Huntington Hilton in Melville from 630 to 9 p.m. 
and the topic, how to start building wealth in real estate today. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, it's always been our mission to empower and educate families for financial independence through real estate. And we have time and time again, we've had um, experiences and stories. Um, it was great. Um, Sal had a, a um, Sal Rosolo from Cardinal Financial, one of our sponsors here at Long Island Maria. He had a uh, benefit uh, two weeks ago and For it was workaholics anonymous. <laughs> I know, but it really what it went to the cause was to help those that are drug and alcohol abuse and how that can really affect every family. But he raised over 30,000. But at that event that we were there, um, it was so nice to see people come up to us and say how much they've changed our lives. And I think of one person in particular and it was just so inspiring to hear them say um, thank you and um, realize that they have a better life because of it. Excellent. Uh, so uh, Angelina is the one Angel I was thinking. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All so, right. So, I mean, that being said, I mean, he it was based on uh, <laughs> alcohol and, and drug addictions and stuff like that. But Sal will be sponsoring our open bar for that night. <laughs> yeah, and if you want to donate to that cause, it was really uh, beneficial. We raised over $30,000 that night, or okay. he raised over $30,000. Everybody contributed. And uh, if you'd like to contribute, I'm sure, sure he'll have that at the event as well. Excellent. So it's free for members, $29 if you pre-register on the website, liareia.com, and $50 if you pay at the door. Um, if you've never been to one of our meetings before, Melissa, how would they get a free ticket? So they can do um, out of the podcast. Out of the podcast. That's a new one. I've never listened to that one before. <laughs> I'm sorry. Out of the rat race. Out of the rat race podcast.com. <laughs> register and send an email asking for a free event ticket and, and it was alejandra that said that okay. <laughs> angelica <laughs> oh, those names are very days. similar yeah sorry. all right alejandra that was so touching of you to come up to us that night so yep. i'm glad question number two so you found out how much money you owe the world yep. how should you structure what to tackle first and how would you begin doing so so when you do the spreadsheet you want to list the name of the creditor you want to list the amount that you out the outstanding balance that you owe. You want to know the due date. You also want to know the interest rate that you're paying and the minimum payment. So if you can make those columns out, you can start to see it on the spreadsheet. And you look at um, what you're paying in interest on some of these credit cards, and then you can take it from there. I'm probably going to jump on to the next question if I keep going. Okay. <laughs> Is it? Am I, I going on the next the, question? Well, the next one's a random one. Oh, all right. All right. Uh, random question number two. This is going to be a good one because I'd, I'd love to see what your answer is going to be on this. How do you think not having a cell phone or an, or the internet for a month would change you? Jeez. It'd be like detoxing and might as well be a monk. Um, Either that or it would be like you're in a cell and you'd no, feel stuck. No, I mean, let's face it. There, there are certain benefits to detoxing from that much uh, connectivity of um, day to day life, but um, it's certain beneficial at times. But um, yeah, I'm sure that would be a nice luxury to have a vacation off for a month. So you think it would just relax you? No, I think it would create more anxiety. Cause more I'd more anxiety. Yeah, because I'd want to touch base with the kids, you, and stuff like that. So excellent. Yeah. Uh, so what are some of the other avenues that you could use to uh, kind of tackle the debt back in its cage? All right. So let's pick up where we left off, right? So you got this spreadsheet, right? You've listed your creditor name. You've listed the outstanding balance. You listed the um, the due date, the interest rate, and the monthly amount, right? So then you're going to start to look at it. If you have a large amount of little credit cards that have small balances, maybe $500 or less, quickly just pay it off in full. Stop, let it linger. The other thing, there's a couple of strategies. Um, there's philosophies of putting paying the highest interest rate more uh, off more. But what I found is, yes, that makes sense, but um, psychologically, it's a lot harder. You feel a lot more gratitude if you can just pay off the debt. So if you have... Let's say you have 15 columns of debt, right? You listed them out and there's 15 of them. And three of them are under $500 a piece. Well, just each month, take one and just attack it and pay it off in full. Next one, pay it off in full, pay it off in full. So in three months, you've gotten knocked off three of your debts. So you went from 15 down to 12. And now you look at them, 
You can also do this. If you have a lot of them that are, you know, 15% or higher, right? You can go to your local credit unions. They're really um, helpful for this in restructuring debt. You can get one-time personal installment loan. Let's say you get it for $15,000 or $20,000. Take that $20,000 off and pay off as many, many of those credit cards that you can. Um, some say, oh, just pay the high interest rate off. Um, but again, it goes down to psychologically, you start attacking it. The nice part is those are installment loans. That means that that has an end date. Right. Revolving credit is your credit cards, um, student loans that never seem to die. Um, so you want to make sure that you use those paid off for those interest rates that are anywhere from 15 to 29 percent. Pay as many of them as you can so that your monthly payment is reduced. All right. So that's you got to carefully look at your spreadsheet. It's a little harder to describe it through the um, podcast, but you want to look at it on your spreadsheet and you think about it is, could that $15,000 loan pay off seven of your credit card debts? Then attack that. And now you went from having 12 down to five debts. So like psychologically, you in less than a year, in less than six months, you could have reduced so much of those debts on your head right? Then you took the extra cash flow for the monthly payments that you had, you know, the monthly payments, you should have a little bit left over, start attacking one of the debts, one of the least amount. In other words, if you have um, debts that are 4,000, 7,000, 8,000, 12,000, start with the 4,000, start really attacking that and put all your extra payments toward that debt until it's fully paid off. It's called a snowball method of paying debts. So you can always look it up online. But really what you're doing is you're attacking one debt at a time to get it off your books so that you don't have it ever again. And this works really well for people to get a plan to get out of debt within two to five years. So yeah, just a quick question, and maybe you could touch on this if, if you know the answer. When I was doing uh, research for this topic, I did see that uh, somebody said that you could actually save money doing this by taking out an installment loan through your, your credit union, like you said, right. <clears throat> excuse me, and then calling up the credit cards that you're going to pay and asking for a payoff amount. Sometimes they'll work a deal with you to make it less. Is that you, correct? Yeah, you could do that, but here's the thing. You have to watch. Some of them will negatively affect your credit by doing that. So if you take a um, reduced payoff amount, some of them will, um, you can say, listen, if I pay it in full, will you reduce my late fees and my interest by say $1,000? Just be careful that they're not going to put on your credit report paid less than the debt owed. And the reason why is because that will have a very negative impact on your credit. Whereas if you pay off the debt, it will actually increase your credit lines, uh, your, your credit score, which means you could go out and get one more installment loan afterwards and pay off the other debts. So just be careful when you're doing that negotiation that they're not going to have a negatively reporting credit report. Unfortunately, you're dealing with customer service reps, so they'll tell you whatever they want to say. Yeah. <laughs> but um, that's often why I don't even negotiate with them. I'd rather just settle it and go down. Um, you might be able to say, you know, could you reduce my interest rate on the higher interest rates? Uh, especially once you start paying off a few, your credit score will naturally go up. And there's nothing ha harmful about saying, hey, you know what? I'm getting offered on my credit card at 12% and you're charging me 19%. Can you reduce it down to 12? Nine times out of 10, they'll just do it and there's no effect to your credit. All right. What about like, what do you, how do you feel about those other credit cards that you could put like five credit cards on and then have one balance? So that's credit consolidation. You have to be very careful about that. Um, what they don't tell you is you go to these credit counselors and they're not telling you that um, when they negotiate for 50 cents on the dollar and all this, that um, it really, ha it almost destroys your credit, almost destroys it. So there's these companies, sometimes attorneys that say, listen, you pay us a monthly fee of $300 a month. We'll let it build up. You don't pay your credit cards. We'll negotiate it and get it less money. And then 
but what you're doing is just destroying your credit. So I do believe that the snowball method, and I believe it's a da David Ramsey uh, philosophy. I'm not entirely sure I should look that up. But um, what I would say is that I've seen more success with students do that and get successfully out of debt without damaging their credit. So by the time they're done, they started out at like a 660 credit score and they're up to almost 800 by the time they're done paying off the debt. They have a lot more uh, self-esteem about where they are. They have more control over their financial future and they have a higher credit score. So they just feel better about themselves altogether. And going through that process and realizing how hard the debt is to pay off makes you a little more cautious about when you take on debt. And, you know, it's kind of appropriate we're doing this topic when the government just came out with that uh, freedom of forgiveness for student loans with $20,000. Um, you know, a lot of mixed emotions about that. If you're receiving the benefit, you might say that's, that's a help to you. Some, it's just a drop in the bucket. Uh, we know this one student has over $800,000 in student loan debt. I mean, 20000 is not going to even make yeah. an impact in her. <laughs> And for people like myself who were diligent about, you know, not taking on student debt, um, paid for the classes that they went, um, glad that I didn't because I went to a business school that went out of business. So that really tells you what I could learn from that school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's frustrating that we're taking on student debt through paying it through taxes. So if we could all be a little bit more fiscally responsible, and I get it, you know, it's not like people are taught how to get out of debt in high school because right. I don't have that yet. And then student loans are so freely given because any other loan that you have to do, you're underwritten by can your ability to repay the loan, especially with mortgages. You have to do a very tight underwriting for it. So you've got two years bank statements. You've got, um, you've got to prove your debt and income can pay the bill, the, pay the bill. You have to do that with credit cards. You know, they want to see, you know, can you have the ability to repay it? But student loans, they don't. They base it on future earnings of a possibility. And oftentimes, that's where young people are getting stuck. And so I would say look at other alternatives of education if you can't afford it or budget for it. Pay your student loans while you're in school. I did that so that didn't accrue any interest. But if I hadn't worked in the student loan department <laughs> at Chase, I wouldn't have known that, you know. So I would tell that to everybody. Um, learn how to manage debt. It's very freeing when debt doesn't control you, but you control the debt. All right. So as, as people are paying these credit cards off, do you think that they should cut them or keep them revolving? What do you think they should do? Because you don't want to get into the same habit again and, and uh, getting into the same issue. Well, a lot depends on you, right? So do you have control over it? Like kind of like weight loss, you know, you lose all this weight and then do you load your house up with tons of Twinkies? You know, it's just temptation that's uh, not there. Or do you say, hey, you know what? I'm going to use these credit cards for specific things. So I use them as investments, not as charges. So if I can't afford to pay for my whatever, uh, I want to buy a new furniture set, I'll have to either save up for it you know, layaway was a great thing back in the day, but because yeah. <laughs> uh, it kept people a little bit financially responsible. But we're in the age of instant gratification. So you got a credit card. Oh, you go furniture. Oh, it's zero percent for four months. They don't tell you you go past the fifth month and they back charge you all the interest. You know, same as cash. Read the fine line. You know, you could get hit with a lot of charges on the back end. So a lot of people are in debt simply because they're not educated what the loan, how the loan works and how interest is accrued. So the more you can educate yourself on it, the less likely are you are to use it. Now, in our case, right, <clears throat> um, we, we only have one personal credit card. That's right. it. Um, we happen to like the Apple Pay card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, because you get money back and all that stuff. But and it's very convenient to use and convenient to pay. Honestly, that's yeah, it's why it's very I love easy it. to pay. Yeah, as soon as we make a charge, we almost take it out of our credit card, our, our checking account within a week. We're paying off the balances every week, so that kind of helps you see what you're charging. Um, that is very helpful. Um, stay on top of it. So here's the thing: once you get out of debt, you do need to have credit. I mean, I know there's a philosophy: just have be debt free for your life. 
That's not how the real world works. You need a credit card to rent a rental car. You need it to pay for a hotel. You need it. So, but you don't have to have 20 million of them. You can have one, one personal credit card, keep the debt, the uh, utilization or the amount you have. Don't let it go past a certain point and that's it. And then you can have it. Um, then you can control it a lot better. All right. Random question number three. What is okay. the most embarrassing thing that you have ever worn? Oh. Well, you didn't even hear it. Finish okay, the, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. The most embarrassing thing that you've ever worn. Oh, God, there's so many embarrassing moments. Um, Do you ever wear like a bunny suit? Like anything like that? Like from that uh, Christmas Carol movie? or I went to a costume party dressed up as a baby one time, so that was embarrassing. <laughs> how, uh, how old were you? <laughs> I was 13, so oh, God. I could get away with it a little bit, but that was embarrassing because... It was my first like grown up party and most of the people were 16 to 18. So, um, so you were the baby of the bunch. Yeah. So I was just, did you have a pacifier or a bottle? I had a pacifier and a bottle. Were you wearing a diaper? (laughs) No. Did you have to wear Depends at 13? (laughs) No, that would have been funny though. No. (laughs) What kind of baby are you? (laughs) I know, but it was funny. Yeah. I guess that would be the one. The other one was, um, we're getting two for the price of one year. No, I, all right. No, 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 no. What's the other one? I th- thought it'd be funny to dress up at school and my mom didn't like this outfit I was wearing. So I snuck it into school and I changed when I was in school. <laughs> right. <laughs> I've got to change back when I went home. <laughs> so I got in trouble for that. But it was like, you know. That wasn't embarrassing though because you wanted to wear it. All right. Um, let me see. And last but not least, question four. Go for it. All right. When is it a good time to pull out all of the stops and declare bankruptcy? The big B. The big B. Okay. So it's when it's truly not practical to work out a, a methodology. Now I had to, you know, I'm perfectly candid about my mistakes in life. Um, and I did have to file a bankruptcy, but I, ironically, I didn't have one stitch of credit card, student loan, or any debt. It was only mortgage debt that I had to file on. And um, it was because when when we talked about this snowball method, you should be out of debt within five years, um, figuring out how to pay it off, right? Now, you definitely have to see an attorney for advice on this. But what I have experienced was when my bankruptcy attorney sat with me, it was a very hard decision because it was, it was a, a tragic event that led to my bankruptcy. So um, I, I, I had my jaw broken. I had some severe injuries. I was in the hospital for a long time. And um, so there definitely was a reason for the bankruptcy. But the second part was it was going to take me a lot longer than seven to 10 years to ever try to work out that debt. And I was so far underwater with so many of the mortgages that there was no way to pay it back. Remember that happened in 2007, so the values of the properties weren't there, so I couldn't sell them, and I couldn't afford to keep holding on to them. They would have taken through the foreclosure process anyway. So we had to look at the pros and cons, and he said, listen, if it's going to take you 11 to 12 years to get out of this debt, um, don't put that stress on my family. Do not, do not ever ever use your retirement account to pay your debts. That's the only asset protection you have is your retirement funds. If you file for bankruptcy, they're not allowed to take the money from the retirement account. And I'm saying this because when I was a single mom and here I am jaw broken, three little babies, and I had to file for the bankruptcy and I mistakenly wiped out my retirement account I took out $42,000 to pay the mortgages and I didn't have money to feed the kids. Hmm. And I didn't think about that part of it, that I was giving money to banks that certainly had enough, but my children, you know, there was weeks we were eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and ramen noodles because I couldn't afford that. It was just a horrible time. I, um, I remember for Christmas, I had to pay for my Christmas tree. I asked the beg the guy to give me a 50% off on Christmas Eve and paid him with the coins I could collect from my couch and area around, around the house. So all because I cashed in my IRA account. So please never, ever do that. And if this podcast reaches you and you're going through those struggles, understand that there's other methods 
to pay for your debts than your retirement account, okay? There's only severe cases where that might really help out, but if it's not going to help you out in the long run, keep that retirement money. You may need it for true hardships like feeding your family. So that's my two cents on that. But, Excellent. But yeah, a bankruptcy, definitely see the seek a counsel of maybe not one, but two attorney, uh, bankruptcy attorneys before you file and think about it. Um, try everything you can first to figure out a plan to get out of it. And sometimes there's two different types of bankruptcy and a lot of people don't know that. There's a chapter seven which wipes out all debts and you think, oh, that sounds so great. But it has its place and then there's a chapter 13 where it restructures the debt. Um, a, a chapter 13 will help your credit a little bit better, gives you more character and more self-esteem. A lot of times we use chapter 13s when we're trying to restructure the debt of a mortgage to save somebody's home. So um, it's a great strategy to use. Um, oftentimes it can help reduce the monthly payment. Therefore, you can afford to pay all the other debts off. So again, seek the advice of a bankruptcy attorney. Don't listen to your friends or people who've done it. Um, you need to, to get legal advice on that too. And the laws changed quite a bit too. So um, from the time I filed bankruptcy to now, the laws have changed quite a bit. So stay up on that as well. Okay. And uh, is there anything else you wanted to add before we get into the lightning round of questioning? Um, that this is a serious topic. You know, I, I, um, I'm glad we're covering it because really people don't teach this. And there are so many people that you can seek out that are specialists in debt reduction. Um, there's a lot of clever ideas. I, I found for myself that the snowball method works. And here's the thing. You can do it also for businesses. You can do it for your personal life. And you know what? You should do this once a year. Just kind of take assessment of where you're at with all your debt. And sometimes we just do it now to just reduce our interest rate. We're doing good, but hey, you know what? We're paying 12%. Could we be paying 7%? You know, And like teach that. it to your family because the schools are not going to. Yeah, definitely. You know, and, the, and don't be allured by the um, sexy appeals that credit cards have. You know, you oh, 0% for a year and then it goes to 30%. Um, or you get the cash refund. If you're, dil if you're disciplined about it, you can use um, credit to your advantage. But again, it goes back to don't let credit use you. You use credit. Right. All right. Uh, lightning round of questioning. Ready? Go for it. What is your worst cooking failure? Oh, my God. There's <laughs> so, so many. Even this week, my your, poor son. Your worst son, one. Uh, my poor son asked me for um, grilled cheese and uh, the smoke detector probably went off. Um, probably my worst one was the raviolis. Um, what happened? It was when I was living home with my mom and dad, and I, he, my dad asked me to make dinner, and it was like glue. I, I don't know what I added to it, maybe, I don't know, but it stuck, and it was one lump, <laughs> and it was not, it was like raw in the middle, and it was like burnt on the eggs uh, outside, and put enough water in it, and my dad wound up ordering dinner. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> so bad. All right. I have so many of those stories, it's so bad. <laughs> What's your favorite vegetable? Right, vegetable. Probably carrots. Carrots? I never see you eat carrots. You say they're too crunchy. What are you talking about? I still like them. <laughs> <laughs> it's your favorite. You don't Do eat you see them. Do you eat any vegetables? I see. I, I make you, well, <laughs> yeah. all the things I make. So zucchini. Uh, asparagus. Asparagus. Like. Spinach. Like, I like asparagus and spinach. Yeah. Those are my two favorite greens. So I'm giving you all the answers. Yeah. yeah all right. right. What is the first thing that you look at on nutrition labels? <laughs> Do you even know where that is? <laughs> the price tag? <laughs> They're not on the nutrition labels. Um, probably. Calories, fat, sugar, protein. Protein, protein, protein. probably, yeah. Okay. Uh, do you prefer freckles or dimples? Oh, we have kids with both. So I like, I guess, freckles more than dimples. Luxury or efficiency? Definitely. Well... You were going to say luxury. I was going to say luxury, and then you said efficiency. So I'm thinking like luxury shoes. I hate fancy shoes. I like comfortable shoes. So that's efficiency. All right, I'll go with efficiency. Small business or corporation? You know what's weird? I would have said small business all day long. But now that we're a publicly traded company, 
Um, the way we're doing it, I really like it because it has a small, um, small business feel to it with a real corporate support. So I love that. All right. And uh, the last question, would you rather be seated next to a screaming baby or someone with really bad body odor on an airplane for six <laughs> hours? God. Well, seeing that I can handle a screaming baby, I would definitely say screaming baby than body odor. See, I'd rather sit next to the person with body odor. And the reason is, is because everybody turns around to look at the screaming child. And if you're sitting there and <laughs> you're going to look like the parent. Yeah. but And that's I, just embarrassing. No, no, it's not. I, you know, what are you going to do? Baby cries. But I could probably soothe it. I could do something about the baby, crying baby. And eventually they stop, you know, because they pass out or something. But the body odor you can't fix on the plane. On the plane. Put your mask on. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't cover it. Oh man, guys! Real estate investing is the pathway to success, but education is the key. Go to the outright. You sure haven't that, done this in a while. No, I haven't. All right, take two. That, Ready? Take two. Go for it. <laughs> guys, real estate investing is the pathway to success, but education is key. Go to out of the rat race podcast.com, register, and receive the ebook that'll explain to you where to get the money to begin investing in real estate today. Stop chasing the cheese and learn how to make it for yourself because only then can you truly escape the rat race. From Melissa, our staff, and myself, happy investing.